What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s and Istio. I think it's a safe guess that most workloads running on Kubernetes are based on microservice architectures. I would also say that is largely due to the fact that microservices translate really well to containers. But one of the glaring challenges of deploying microservices to Kubernetes is figuring out network communication from the outside world into your clusters and specifically to the services inside of it, as well as network communication between the services themselves. And in this video, I'll discuss and demonstrate how you can use Istio to manage the traffic routing to your microservices in an Amazon EKS cluster. In Kubernetes, we have services to expose our applications. And services are these stable network abstraction layers that sit in front of our pods and keep track of a table of IPs for the running pods that they're attached to. To expose our apps to the outside world, we typically use load balancer services and node port services. And in some cases, these work really well. But we have to be aware of their shortcomings for other scenarios. For one, creating an external load balancer for every service is not cost effective, whether you have a small set or a large set of microservices. And opening a node port for every service is not secure because you're increasing the attack surface area with each port that you open up. Not to mention, these services only listen for traffic on layer four of the network OSI model. So they're listening for TCP or UDP traffic. And there'll probably be scenarios where you wanna handle HTTP traffic. What you wanna have is a single point of entry into your cluster where you can implement security measures and controls and smart routing to the relevant microservices. This way, your pods can be fronted by cluster IP services that will proxy the traffic through to the pods. And this whole setup is something that Istio can help with. Istio is an open source implementation of a service mesh. And a service mesh is a distributed middleware solution that sits at the infrastructure level. And its job is basically to handle all the network communication responsibilities on behalf of your applications. We can use it to manage things like service discovery, load balancing, health checks, throttling, tracing of network requests, retries, and a whole lot more. And that way we don't have to build these things into the application itself. It can all be configured separately in the mesh. And its architecture consists of a data plane, a control plane, and an ingress and egress gateway. The data plane consists of service proxies that live side by side to the applications that they're managing network responsibilities for. The control plane has a number of components and its core functionality is to expose an API for us to be able to configure the behavior of the data plane components. And the ingress and egress gateways manage traffic flowing into and out of the mesh. I'm going to analogize it because service meshes can be a bit tricky to understand. And as much as this isn't meant to be a deep dive into service meshes, I wouldn't want you to get lost. Let's say you had a company that consisted of a business person for every core activity in your company. The company is your Kubernetes cluster, and each business person represents a microservice. And you're looking for a better way to secure and manage communication coming into the company, as well as communication between the different business people in it. A service mesh is a system that can help with that. The data plane is like a team of personal assistants assigned to every business person to manage their communication responsibilities. And the control plane is like a system or framework that allows you to get in touch with every personal assistant in the company to inform them on how they're to handle their duties as a PA for the business person that they're assigned to. Now let's talk more specifically about that single point of entry into our company, which is the cluster. This is like the exclusive doorway for any communication into the company. And this approach allows us to put some strict measures in place for what comes in. And for that, we use the ingress gateway. The ingress and egress gateways operate at the edge of the mesh where they can exercise their respective roles of managing traffic coming in and going out of the mesh. Both of these components are actually Envoy service proxies, but they're distinct from the other service proxies in that they're not coupled to an application. So going back to the analogy, they are not PAs assigned to a specific business person. Instead, they're more like guards who have the overall task of managing all the communication, trying to make its way into the company and all the communication that leaves. The ingress gateway is the guard that accepts or rejects incoming messages based on factors around the specified destination. If the destination criteria are met, the guard will send the message through to the PA of the relevant business person that their message was intended for. And the PA in turn will pass on the message and the business person handles it and sends the response back to the PA and the PA sends it to the guard on egress duty, who will then respond to the client who sent the message. Now let's take a closer look at my built out example. 
you'll see that the Istio Ingress Gateway can expose an external load balancer which will route traffic through to the actual gateway in your cluster. In the AWS context, this is a classic load balancer that has a virtual IP address and proxies traffic to different instances to protect you from a single point of failure. Now, I have a specific host name that is mapped to this external load balancer's virtual IP in Amazon Route 53. So any client request to the specific host name, lukemila.com in this case, will go through the Route 53 DNS servers to resolve to the relevant IP addresses. And the traffic from those requests eventually makes its way through to the Istio Ingress Gateway, which, if you recall, is the ingress point for traffic into the cluster and into the service mesh. But how does the gateway actually know what traffic to listen for and where that traffic should go? And for that, we can use the gateway and virtual service resources to configure Istio. And I'm going to switch over to my editor now and walk you through that and the live demo. All right, so I've switched over to my VS Code editor and the file that I have open here is the one that contains the gateway and the virtual service resources. Let's start off by talking about the gateway resource. This is what we use to configure the Istio Ingress gateway. It's how we can specify the ports that we actually want to open up and the virtual host that can receive traffic from those ports. So as you can see over here, I'll be opening up port 80 to receive HTTP traffic destined for the virtual host lukemuila.com, which is the address used by clients when attempting to connect to one of my microservices. So the gateway resource determines the port that I'm listening on, as well as the network protocol on the port and the hosts that serve that port and protocol. Next, we have to think about how do we get it to the appropriate destination? And that's where virtual services come in. Now, virtual services are powerful resources. In my case, I have three of them, one for each of my microservices. And these virtual services that we have over here are what allow us to configure the behavior of the sidecar service proxies in terms of traffic routing. And we can use them to specify rules about how to interact with the services in our mesh. And we do that by applying routing rules to Kubernetes services. You can see over at, you can see that over here, very, very similar to ingresses for those of you that have worked with them. And as I mentioned, they, they also function a lot like ingresses. And you can see that they're applied to specific gateways. You can see under gateways over here, I've applied it to the e-commerce gateway, which is the gateway that I've created or specified up there rather. Each of these resources are, has already been created in my EKS cluster. Now, in addition to applying them to specific gateways, we also specify the destination service for the incoming traffic, which is the properties that you see over here. And I've also specified the URI paths, and this is specifically for the GraphQL service. And so you'll see there are two URI paths over here. The first one is to actually query the GraphQL endpoint. And the second one over here that says playground uh, presents a nice UI for being able to interact with the GraphQL endpoint. Now, in addition to that, um, I've also specified the destination service, really important. So you can see over here under root and destination, the GraphQL service. So this is a cluster IP service for the cluster, for the GraphQL microservice. And in addition to that, the specific port that the application is, that the service is listening for traffic on, the service will then in turn forward that traffic to the target port for the containers. Now, in addition, I've added some resilience to the service by adding retry configurations in the case of request failures. Now, uh, the virtual services for the orders and the products um, microservices look very similar. The main difference would be the UI, the URI um, prefixes that I've added. So you'll notice in this case, um, it's just the, spe the specific paths for those microservices. And the other difference would obviously be the destination host. This is the product service. And similarly, orders would be updated accordingly. And of course, I've updated the port number for the specific ones that those um, services are listening for traffic on, but each one of them has the retry configurations set up. Now, just for a little more detail around these microservices, I'm working with a dummy e-commerce application that I typically use for my example um, applications in different demos. And the GraphQL application is just going to be aggregating all of the data from the orders and products microservices. And then the order service just lists all the existing orders. And of course, the product service is going to list all the existing products. And what I'm going to do now is switch over to the browser. 
and let's start on the far left over here. And um, as you can see, we are looking at my EKS cluster. It's called Alpha, and I'm running version 1.21 of Kubernetes. And I've got a single node group with four T3 medium nodes. Let me switch tabs to root 53. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm using root 53. And as you can see, I have an A record that maps my domain name, lukemuidla.com, to the external load balancer created by the Istio Ingress gateway. Right, and next up, this is the GraphQL endpoint. And so this is the default GUI that it gives us. And so I'm just going to quickly add a query over here so you can see that this is working. And you can see over here, we've got this data from both the orders microservice and the products microservice, and they are being aggregated by our GraphQL microservice. And the feedback we have over here is we've got orders for Peter Parker, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, and Reed Richards. Each of them has placed a distinct order. As you can see, Peter Parker is going for the DSLR camera. Steve Rogers has ordered a pair of trainers. Tony Stark Bluetooth headphones and Reed Richards and Avengers t-shirt. He's probably trying to get into the Avengers squad. Anyway, over here is the playground endpoint that you saw I specified in the virtual service for the GraphQL virtual service. And as I mentioned, I prefer this UI to the default one that you get over here, but it works the exact same way. It queries the exact same endpoint. Um, so not much of a difference. And you can see I've already run it, which is why I've got this response over here. There you go. And then lastly, just to show you the orders endpoint and the products endpoint, and that's because there might be instances in which you don't want to aggregate the data with GraphQL. You might want to just um, reach out to the specific microservice um, and directly reach that API. But you'll notice over here, I'm querying lukemuila.com version one orders, which is what I had specified in my virtual service. And I'm just going to refresh that. And so you can see over here, we've, for this particular list, all we get is the ID, the product ID, and who the order is for. Obviously with GraphQL, what it was doing is it makes use of this product ID in order to fetch the specific product details. And then lastly, we've got our products list over here, also lukemuila.com, which is the same case for GraphQL. I don't think I pointed that out, but just so you're aware of that. And so you can see how the gateway and the virtual services are working. And the last thing will be just to come to K9S, um, one of my favorite open source tools. And um, just so you can see over here under gateways. And so if you ever want to check out different resources with K9S, all you have to do is simply search for it. So we're going to go to pods just so we can see all the running pods and in all the namespaces. Hit enter. There we go. And you can see over here, um, this is where my three replicas are running in the e-commerce namespace for GraphQL. Same thing for orders and products. And down here, you'll see that we've got Istio Ingress Gateway running as well as the Istio Egress Gateway. Last thing that I want to show you is the virtual services. And you can see these are the three services that I created. We've got one for GraphQL, one for orders, and one for products. And as I mentioned, these are the specific resources that we use to manage how our sidecar service proxies actually route traffic through to the destination services. And there you have it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that useful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.